Hey YouTube, it's Chris. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to do a full AMD graphics card best settings 2021, lowest input lag, highest FPS, all that good stuff. Now, I have some juicy stuff in this video for you guys. How to disable P states, disable the uh, graphics card from downclocking. There is a big latency issue with these cards. And Nvidia cards too, but not so much where if you play a very CPU bound title, the graphics card just doesn't boost at all and you get this incredibly high input lag. If you're curious to see what that looks like, go check out my CSGO optimization video. It's really, really interesting stuff. Now, Nvidia cards have three boost stages. Like you got GP Boost 1, 2, and 3. Now, it'll always hit GP Boost 2 if there is a slight graphical application open. So GP Boost, just think of GP Boost 1 as like a sleep state. GP Boost 2, for example, on a 2080 Ti, it boosts to like 1800 megahertz. Right, even if you are in a very CPU bound game like CSGO and Valorant, so at least boost somewhat. But to stop and get the best input lag possible, you would want to lock it to GP Boost 3, which would be about 2000 megahertz, give and take, depending on the card that you have. Now, on AMD cards, it's even worse. There's no GP Boost 2, there's just sleep mode or boost. That's it. So, in very, very CPU bound games like CSGO and Valorant, even if you are playing a higher resolution because your GPU usage is not at a high amount. The GPU doesn't boost and it's literally sitting at like a couple hundred megahertz and you get this crazy input lag. Now this issue might not be too much of a problem if you are using a really, really, really old graphics card and you're gonna be at high GPU usage, any usage anyway, whatever game you play. But if you have a medium to high end card, this input lag issue is actually insane. Now here's the thing. It only applies the input lag issue on games that are very, very CPU heavy and not GPU heavy, but you can improve your frames and 1% to 0.1 so by locking the core, even on modern titles that will dupe, that will boost this uh, graphics card anyway. So we're gonna include that in this video. So a bit, a bit of a rant, but we're gonna cover over absolutely everything. Now guys, if you have followed my optimization pack, you can have most of the files that you need, which are gonna be in here. The C drive, optimization pack, and graphics optimizations. So hopefully you guys have followed that already. If you haven't, you can grab the files that you need. But what we're gonna need is we're gonna need the latest AMD driver, we're gonna need MSI Afterburner, we're gonna need Spy Driver Uninstaller, we're gonna need more power tools, which is really cool. We can modify BIOS settings without actually modifying the card itself. We can do it through registry, this program, and we're gonna need GPU Z. All right, guys, so to get started, what we want to do is completely wipe everything, start fresh with the brand new driver. So go ahead and download the new driver. We're going to use msconfig and command run. Okay, we're going to go straight to boot. We're going to check safe boot, apply, okay, and restart. All right, now that we've restarted in safe mode, let's go to, you can either use the display driver uninstall yourself, or if you followed my optimization pack, we're just going to use this. This is what I like to do every time I install a new driver. So follow through with these steps. So you guys that have already followed the optimization pack video, a lot of these will be very, very familiar to you, but I'm obviously including how to lock the GPU core and a couple of other little extra tweaks that you can get out of the system. All right, so go to display driver uninstaller. I want you to select graphics card. I want you to select AMD. Now, before we press clean and restart, it will boot back to safe mode. So run boot to normal mode, which is MS config in um, command prompt, Windows key R. Okay, Windows 10, turn off safe boot. Well, whatever, you, you guys will probably, you guys won't have dual boot here. You just see one. So uncheck safe boot, press apply, okay, and exit without restart because here we want to click clean and restart. So it's going to clean the driver properly and then boot us back to normal mode. We can install the fresh driver. I really do recommend doing this every time you install a new driver. Like you don't have to, but you're going to avoid having issues quite possibly if you do it this way. Okay, we boot back to our PC. Normally, we do not, we're not in safe mode as you can see. And we go ahead and run the driver to install it. Now guys, you have a couple of options with Java. You can install the full bloated driver with all the overlays and all the logging and all stuff like that. Or you can install the minimum driver. Now, in my opinion, AMD cards are very good for recording or streaming on anyway. So you want to install the minimal driver without all that extra stuff. Okay. But to start, to get this GPU locking method to work, what we kind of do is we install the bloated driver. Okay. 
Then we figure out locking the cores. So there's a couple of steps to locking the core. We've got to use the AMD overclocking software in the driver to lock the core, right? That's the only way to do it. Then we save that in MSI Afterburner. We save that profile in MSI Afterburner. Then we can actually do this again and install just the minimal driver. And then we can just use MSI Afterburner with the profile that we've grabbed to get it to lock the core. And then to get it to lock the core properly, we have to use a couple of programs to disable P states, which is more power tools. So I'll walk you through that guys and I'll show you how to do that. Now, additional options to start, we need to do full install so we can use their software to overclock to steal the profile from. And then afterwards, we're going to use DDU again and go minimal, minimal install. I don't recommend driver only at all because you can't change any settings like sharpening and uh, your preferences in the um, control panel. So to start, we're going to go full install, go factory reset, press install. It'll ask for a bit of a restart. So go ahead and install it. Okay, once it's installed, restart your PC because AMD drivers are a little bit funky sometimes try to go and change settings after we've installed it just restart the pc okay now before we continue i need to explain this input lag issue with the gp boosting not properly in cpu bound scenarios i've got heaven engine and i've got fps monitor both free programs you can use just as you can disable to show you guys okay so i'll try to go really really cpu bound here this actually does do this in csgo 1080p low and valorant 1080p low okay right have a bit of a look here go to gpu You'll see the um, megahertz right here. See how it's only boosting to about 800 megahertz, right? This card is supposed to boost to 26, I believe. Uh, it's one of the higher end cards. This is this is when you get this huge input lag issue that I was talking about here. We need to stop that from happening. I've just upped the res to 1080p just to show you guys. It boosts a little bit higher, but still not much. And like I said, in CSGO, right? Or Valorant, low settings, 1080p. A boost less than this. This causes the input lag issue. There's a couple of steps we need to do to fix this. Now doing this regardless if you play those games will help your frames and your 1% and 0.1 to be smoother. Just getting it to lock all the time at its max. So what we need to do here is we need to find out basically what the graphics card will boost to regardless of an overclock. Okay. So to figure out what this card boosts to I am just going to do ultra settings in here. I'm just going to put it under like proper load where it would you boost properly. And I'm just going to go 25, 60 by 14, 40, just to make sure that we have enough GPU usage for it to actually boost properly. So we can actually see what it boosts to. <clears throat> now, this is for the guys that haven't overclocked their graphics cards. So see how we're boosting to 2630, 2650, give or take. So 2630. So what we actually need to do now is we need to go into the driver settings. Now, if you guys already have a, uh, overclock for your graphics card you need to dial that in now but if you don't that is okay grab that max value for me it was 2630 so we're going to the driver settings go to performance go to tuning okay here's where we need to basically make a profile and then we need to grab that into MSI Afterburner and save it so what I want you to do is click custom press accept okay you go to GPU tuning okay turn on advanced control right now what we need to do is we need to set our max frequency to what it's supposed to be. Now, thankfully for us, the driver has already done that for us and it's showed us the max frequency. You're going to have to set minimum frequency to 100 megahertz less than this. So this is going to be 2519. Okay. If you set it any more, it just won't work or it'll bump up your max frequency and then that's technically an overclock. You can see here. So if I go apply changes, see how it bumps it up. We don't want that. We want to reset it. Okay. Now, if you have an overclock on your graphics card, so custom, GPU tuning, right? Advanced control. That's our boost. Now, if you guys already have an overclock on your card, put that in now. So for example, for me, like my overclock on this card is 2800. I think I'm using 2850, but as an example, if you've got an overclock, put it here now, then put 100 megahertz less, right? Right? Now, I'm not covering overclocking here, so we're not going to do that. I'm just going to use the default boost, but for you guys that already have overclocked your card before and you know it's stable, you've played with it plenty of times with games and stress to set it great, put in the max frequency of your overclock and then 100 less on the min. 
But for the purposes of this video, I just need to stick it with people that don't want to overclock their graphics card, or have any issues, but they want to lock the core. So once again, we press reset. Now we go to custom, GPU tuning to enabled, advanced control on. Max frequency is already set. We need to set this to 100 megahertz less. So it's 2519 for me. Okay. Voltage, crank it all the way up. VRAM tuning enabled. Then we need to go to memory timing. Set it to fast timing. This will help a little bit. Okay. Advanced control on the VRAM tuning. If you have an overclock on your VRAM, set it now. If you don't want to overclock or, you know, you don't know if it's stable or not, just leave it, please. But for me, it would be 2100 if I was to set this for myself. But for the purposes of this video, we're not overclocking it. We're just going to leave it and get it to factory boost all the time. So just leave that as it is. Okay. Go over to here. Now, smart access memory. You're going to want to make sure this is enabled in BIOS. At the moment, I'm on default BIOS settings because I'm in the middle of reinstalling everything. But this should be enabled for you guys. If you have it and you want to update your BIOS, make sure it's enabled in BIOS. And if you've got a graphics card that's supported it. If some of you guys are using a really old AMD GPU, I don't think it will work. But that is okay. Okay. Fan tuning. I mean, it's up to you. We're just going to leave that. This card runs pretty cool for me. So I don't need to worry about it. Power tuning, I would definitely crank the power limit all the way up. Okay, and then press apply. Okay, once you've done that, we're gonna check over it again. So we've got GPU tuning on, advanced control, min frequency 100 less than the max frequency, voltage cranked all the way up, fast timing, advanced control, checking the memory frequency. We're not touching that because we're not overclocking it. Max power limit and we've applied changes, great. So now we need to open MSI Afterburner. So like I said, hopefully you guys have followed my optimization pack. And you can go ahead and grab my MSI Afterburner from here to save yourself some hassle and time. Go ahead and we're going to go and head and open MSI Afterburner. Just going to copy that to the desktop. Now here's what we do. Now that profile should be saved on here. And if it's not, the AMD driver has bugged out. So we need to go back to the AMD driver. We need to change this again. And it looks like, yeah, it bugged out. So let's reset this again. And start. It's a little bit tedious, but once we've done this and we can save this and MSI Afterburner, we can remove all the bloat from this driver and start fresh. Okay, guys? So you don't have to, and you can use this. You can just use this driver, but honestly, I've had it bug out on me that many times where it just resets itself and you don't even know. And you'll come in and check it a couple of days later and you're like, shit, the past couple of days I was running without the graphics card overclock. I didn't realize. Whereas MSI Afterburner will always apply it on start. So that's why we want to kind of weed away from using this and just get that profile to save an MSI Afterburner. There is no way to lock the core in MSI Afterburner. That's why we have to steal the profile from here. All right, back here we go. Custom, GP tuning enabled, advanced control enabled, set minimum frequency 100 megahertz less, 2519. Let's enter, voltage is cranked all the way up, VRAM tuning, memory timing, fast timing, advanced control, max frequency is good, power tuning, power limit turned all the way up, now we apply and then it should show an MSI afterburner. I don't know why it's not. Usually it will. Maybe this apply setting on startup is bugging it out. Maybe we need to restart the PC. There it is. Okay. So I just had to, I had to turn that little apply overclock on startup setting off an MSI afterburner. And now we can see that ref reflect in here. How do I know it's reflected in here? Because you can see the power limit is set to 15, but usually it's zero. We didn't do we didn't do that in here. We did that in here. So that's how we know we can save the profile now. So we're good. So this is applied in here. Now we want to save it in here. So we click save to profile one. Now just to be safe, I'm gonna save it to like five profiles. Save three, save four, save five. But now we are good. Now what we can actually do is we can go back to tuning and then we can reset this back to default. And we can just use the profile in here, right? So I press reset, I press one, apply, and the appliance system start up. That saves a profile in MSI Afterburner, believe it or not, okay? This will actually save that locked curve and I'll find it for you guys. Open file location, profiles. It'll save it in the profiles here. I believe it's in, in here. It'll actually save it. I'll save the curves. Unfortunately, there's no other way to do this. We have to do it this way. We've got what we needed. Now, we have to repeat the process, guys. All right. We're going to have to go into safe mode. 
uninstall the driver, now we can install the non-loaded driver. So I'll spare you guys the hassle with this video. We're already up to 15 minutes. Safe mode, display driver uninstall for AMD, boot to normal mode, install the driver, and we go minimum. See you guys in a sec. Okay guys, I've just installed the minimum driver. So use display driver uninstall, uh, blah, 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 install the minimum driver. See here, you don't see all the extra stuff here now. It's more of a minimum driver, as you can see. Okay, now let's go back to MSI Afterburner. Just check that that profile is there, it is. So for now, let's just turn it off. So it's unchecked it. That's apply settings on startup. We turn that off and we'll just reset it for now. Let's continue with the optimizations and I'll get back to telling you guys there's more we have to do to lock the core because just doing that does not fix the issue. It still won't fully lock in CPU bound situations. So now that we can follow it, now that we are continuing on, we can follow the Freethe optimization pack. We can just continue through here. So MSI mode for GPU. You don't need to do this on AMD cards, but it's something I like to check to make sure that the driver is in MSI mode. It is. It's in a minus number and this is checked, so we don't need to worry about it. If you have a really, really old AMD card and it's not, you could check it. It'll help a little bit. We want to make sure we go ahead and check P PCI uh, gen and resizable bars. So obviously what you see here, 16 times at 4 is what it can do. And you want to make sure your card is in that. If it's not, you might have another PCI device in the motherboard. You might want to unplug or you might be one of the unfortunate ones who has a laptop or... A pre-build with a really bad board that just won't do this in 16 times. It might only do it in eight times. Or maybe you have a, you know, 10900K with Z490 or under where I only do PCIe Gen 3. That is okay. It is okay. But if it's in Gen 2, I'd be a little bit concerned. If you're in eight times, it's something that you might want to, if you can change and fix, it will help a little bit. Go to advanced PCI resizable bar. You want this all enabled completely. All right. Um, so I don't have it enabled in BIOS because at the moment um, I'm redoing my BIOS profile as factory defaults at the moment, but you would want to make sure this is all enabled and this is enabled. Okay. So you need a supported graphics card, supported motherboard, blah, 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 blah. But um, it doesn't do much for a lot of games, but the newer games that are coming out, it will help a lot. So definitely recommend checking that. Let's go to AMD driver settings. There's some really cool stuff in here, guys. I've, I've had a really good time ever since I got this card. It's been a real good time. Let's go to preferences. Okay, I like to turn all of this annoying stuff off. Okay, and I have to make sure you're opted out for the AMD user experience program. If you accidentally check that, click opt out. Go straight to video. Don't need to change anything here. Go to display. Okay, here's where I found AMD cards get a little bit funky with capture cards and cloning displays. A lot of you guys won't have this kind of a config, but it's just something to keep in mind. Over here, if you have a capture card, <laughs> Make sure you set the color depth to the correct um, setting because mine kept setting it to 10 bit and then it wasn't full RGB and my capture card was completely bugging out. So I just thought I'd want to show you guys that. But you don't have to worry about that. We'll just stick with the gaming monitor because most of you guys will just have a gaming monitor. Okay, FreeSync, if you want to use it, guys, if you're playing games, you're getting FPS way above your refresh rate of your monitor. That is already lower input lag. So just go with FreeSync off. But occasionally, if you play games, you don't get frames over your refresh rate of your monitor. Or you're playing casual games, you definitely don't get frames over the refresh rate of your monitor. It's worth having G-Sync on. It adds very, very low input delay and you've got no screen tearing. For me, in this case, I'm going to be leaving it off. Super resolution will leave off unless you want to uh, trial up scaling resolution. So I have a 1080p display. This will like um, allow me to play 2K and 4K. But we don't want to do that. We'll lose frames. Okay, GPU scaling disabled, scaling mode, preserve aspect ratio. If you guys want to play full screen when you're playing lower resolutions or stretch resolutions, you would want to enable this and you would want to select full panel. Now, display scaling is always recommended. Okay. And when you play lower resolutions or stretch resolutions, you want to do GPU uh, display scaling if possible. It'll only work on some monitors and you need to use a program called Display Driver Uninstall. I recommend checking out those videos. But display scaling is always the lowest input lag. Okay, so we're just going to go back to preserve aspect ratio because I'm playing native. Color depth changed to... Now, I don't know why it shows a different color depth on this because this monitor is only 8. So try to find the native one for your monitor and select it if you select a different... Uh, number here it's gonna look a little bit scuffed okay go ahead and change this to full rgb 
Okay, preferred display enabled. I think it's currently cloned. Yeah, that's why, but you guys wouldn't see that otherwise. So you guys can see the capture card. Go ahead and we want to make sure that the refresh rate is set. If your refresh rate is not set, scroll up and go to arrange displays. Go down to advanced display scaling scenes. We have to use Windows. We can't use a driver for this. Select your display and make sure the resolution is set. If you want to triple check, you can click this one, this one. Scroll down. It's usually the bottom one that you want it set to apply and okay. So we're good there. Now, if you want a little bit of extra lower input lag, surprisingly when I tested this, override the display stuff, you can turn HDCP off. Now, this will bug out maybe when you watch Netflix and using a capture card and stuff. You might not be able to watch Netflix, but I don't. This is a gaming PC. You can turn this off. It will need a restart to apply. But weirdly enough, when I messaged input lag, this actually helps. I don't know why, but it did. It was very minimal, but it did something. Custom color is personal preference, but I like to see my enemies much more clearly. I love the saturation on AMD. I crank that up to the max completely. Okay, personal preference there. This does not affect frames at all. Let's go over to graphics. Very, very easy to optimize this. Now, radiant anti-lag. <sighs> you guys really need a low-end graphics card to consider using this or a medium to high-end graphics card when you're playing 4K Ultra settings. Try it out. It bugs out half the time. It doesn't work that well. I recommend just leaving it off. Use case for you guys. Maybe you have a low-end card. Try it out if you're playing a very, very GPU heavy game. Most of the time I recommend leaving it off. It's just a little bit buggy. Radiant chill, please leave off. Okay. Radiant boost, leave off. We obviously just set a manual lock and overclock if you did. But just, just leave radiant boost off. Um, it's basically kind of like DLSS, I guess. Where it's going to downscale the resolution a little bit to boost your frames a little bit. You can trial it if you guys have a lower end card, it might help a little bit, but I think it's going to make the image look pretty horrible. It might be better off just bumping down the render resolution in game at that stage or bumping down the resolution. Image sharpening does not affect frames whatsoever and is completely separate from the game shaders, unlike Nvidia. Nvidia will lose a couple of frames, MD you do not, and it looks incredible. I love this. I love AMD so much. This is fantastic. Crank this up if you like it, man. It's great. Anyway, scrolling down. Right. So enhanced sync, don't use. It's kind of like fast sync for NVIDIA, but AMD's technology, it does add input lag and can be a little bit buggy. So just stay away from it. It's an interesting It's an interesting way they've done it, but it just, just avoid it at all costs, please. If you want to use something like that, just use free sync. Okay. Wait for vertical refresh. Turn this always off. Don't recommend vSync at all. Okay, scroll down. Frame rate target. Just use the in-game to cap if you can, please. It's the lowest input lag. It's lower the input lag than using the driver. Okay, scroll down. We don't really need to touch much else. Texture filtering quality. Set this to performance. Okay. Tessellation mode set to override application settings. And then set this to off. This will help frames a little bit too. That is all we need to do. There is a reset, reset shader cache. If you have any issues with your games, sometimes you can come here and press that reset the PC. Things might be fixed, especially if you play uh, Warzone and then you think the shaders are bugged out a little bit, hit that. But because this is a fresh drive install, we don't really need to. That's it, guys. Super simple. Go to system. Okay, I like to turn off check for updates and turn off issue detection. I don't want any notifications and stuff. But that is it. The AMD job stuff. Okay. Moving on, what do we need to do next? I've already covered checking refresh rate, so we don't need to do that. Hags isn't a thing with AMD. That's pretty straightforward. Now what we actually need to do is we need to look at locking the core. So let's go back to MSI Afterburner. Okay. And let's apply our config. So press one, apply. Remember that thing that we did with the bloated driver to lock the core? Okay, and then we click apply on system startup, which is that. Now I'll show you guys why and how it doesn't fully work. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to, I don't know, like a lower resolution or whatever. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run this. Now this is a GP megahertz right here. So it looks like it's locking here, kind of, but 
in games like CSGO, it doesn't fully look. It's kind of hard to explain. I think I'll have to really bump down the resolution here to show you guys. But it would, um, it would downclock not as much, but in CSGO, it would, it would just randomly in certain scenes, it would just jump down and then go back up and you would get this weird input lag. Hopefully I can get it to do it for you guys if I go super low res here. But anyway, regardless whether the game is uh, CPU bound or GPU bound, this will help regardless anyway. Okay, they might have fixed some of this issue in the new Java, but it's still there. I've had to go to a very, very um, kind of like a CPU bound situation to show you. But see how the GPU isn't kind of boosting properly? Weirdly enough, on the older drivers, it would actually like uh, be a lot lower. But what I actually found um, testing this kind of long term is... Um, even if you were on a slightly a higher resolution like 1080p, the GPU clock would just randomly jump down. So they may have fixed it in the newer drivers, but to completely... <laughs> this is so weird. Of course they fixed it in the newer drivers now that I'm doing this video. That's so typical. Uh, so technically we don't have to disable P states, but to make sure it doesn't happen or say they bring out a, a newer driver that this issue does happen. Because what happened, what would happen is here, guys, I'm in low setting CSGO 800 by 600, right? Resolution. And what would happen is it would jump down to 800 megahertz and then back up and then back down and you would get this input lag. Now clearly that issue has been fixed in this new driver by the looks of things. But to be safe, let me show you how to, how to lock it anyway to make sure that our locked config in MSI Afterburner actually does work because there's a few extra other little steps. But um, I'm actually kind of really annoyed because I do this video now and they actually fix the issue. Because I, I promise you guys that if you go back to my CSGO video before, you'll see that it was not boosting to this. Yeah, anyway, so continuing on, I'm just going to quit out of the game. So to get a little bit more out of the card, let's go to options. And I would like to thank the people in my community. You know who you are for helping me out with some of this stuff, especially trying to figure out the lock core issue. Uh, you guys know who you are. Thank you very much. And I've been able to include it in this video. So in MS Afterburner in general settings, you want to go to ULPS, which is ultra low power savings. And you want to check that and press apply. Okay. And then it's going to ask for a PC restart. So that's not the issue that, that caused the GPU boost issue. Um, that's actually P states, but we're going to use a more power tool to sort that out. This is just a nice little uh, power option that you can do to turn off. So... Okay, we're back in Windows. What I want you guys to do is install more power tools. Okay. There is a Windows 11 version if you guys are using Windows 11. So just keep an eye out for that on the Igor's Lab website or Igor's Lab, Lab website. Once you've done that, okay, we need GPU-Z to grab our BIOS because how this works is it kind of reads our BIOS and then it will apply different settings in the registry. Now be really careful with this tool. I want you guys to be really careful. I just want you guys to disable the P states, the, the power saving stuff. Okay, so what we need to do in here, we've got GPU Z open, grab the latest. I want you to click this button here, which is going to save our whole graphics card BIOS to a file. Just click desktop, that's fine. Navi21.rom, which is my card. Okay, that's there. We just need that file. Now you can close GPU Z. We've got the Navi file. All right, now open more power tool. You should have a shortcut in the desktop. I want you guys to click your graphics card. I want you guys to click load. Find that BIOS file. Press OK. Now we have all these options to play with. Guys, be really careful with this. Don't do anything else unless you really know what you're doing. You could screw up something very, very badly. It's very, very powerful. You literally have all the options available. All I want you guys to do is go to feature control. Anything that says DS underscore uncheck all of these. This was causing the downclocking issue in the older drivers. Obviously, it doesn't seem to be an issue in the newer drivers, but I don't fully trust it. I guarantee if if guarantee if I played around with it long enough, I'd be able to get it to downclock. Guarantee. And have some hitching in a game in a really CPU-bound situation. So, like I said, regardless, this is still going to help you even if you're playing games that are not just CPU-bound. Because your core will always be locked, you'll always get the smoothest experience, the core won't down clock and you'll get higher 1% than 0 0.1s. So just uncheck all the DSs, press OK, then click Write SSPT. So what that does is, basically it's applying, rather than actually doing hard BIOS mods or reflashing BIOS, it just applies these changes in registry and they will stick. Now if you reinstall Windows or maybe reinstall the driver, you might want to check over this. 
because it may get reset. Now we press exit, then restart the PC. Now that we've restarted the PC, go ahead and open more power tool. Okay. We can check that that's saved. So you just check this. You don't need to load the BIOS because there would be kind of like a setting already there. So I'll try to show you guys. All right. Just click that. And then if you go feature control, you'll see that they're checked off. So we're good. We don't need to touch anything. They're checked off. And just a safe measure, go to MSA Afterburner. All right. Let's just go ahead and check that yield or PS is checked. It's disabled. Cool. And make sure that our profile is, is saved. All right. One, apply, and then apply on system startup. And we're good to go. Now, it's so annoying that this issue did not happen in this video and a new driver fixed it. But I guarantee you, there's a poor guy out there who was playing CSGO or something like that in a really cheap CPU bound situation that was having horrible input lag and then updated driver and then he was like, oh my God, that bad, that other driver was horrible. And he wouldn't have known why because when I measured it guys, it was like a, a three millisecond difference, maybe even higher in some cases, but this will make sure that it never ever down clocks. So the trick to make sure it was never down clocking was grab the min and max core from the bloated driver, transfer it over to MSI Afterburner, and then use more power tool disable P states, which is the DS underscores. That did the trick on the older drivers. We don't even know what the newer drivers are gonna do too. So just a safe measure, just do all of this, the smoothest experience possible. Now, unfortunately, if you want to apply an overclock, you're gonna have to go and figure all that out with the bloated driver, get that fully stabilized, and then save it in MSI Afterburner. But you kind of want to do that anyway regardless because the AMD control panel always bugs out and would reset my overclock anyway whereas this will always make sure it applies on startup silently so I don't need to worry. Right so switching to AMD has been fantastic. For you guys that are curious I get incredibly way more frames in Modern Warfare Engine. Other games not so much. 20 or so more than my 3090 bias flashed overclocked. There are going to be a few games that I will play that and the drivers may not be so good and have less frames. I'll give you guys an example, like Halo Infinite, the beta. I only could only, could only get 160 FPS. NVIDIA cards were getting 300. That could be fixed with a driver, you know, eventually. But in my opinion, it's been the best thing that I've done because one, this card runs so much better than my video card did in the games that I play. And two, the AMD sharpening is incredible. Very, very happy with this card, guys. That covers everything. Hope you enjoyed. All AMD right now. All red team. We'll see what Intel does with 12900K. I don't know. Take it easy, guys. Thanks, I'm out. Bye. Subscribe, like, and share.